Hi guys, Debbie here. Welcome to my channel, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be trying out one of the most hyped makeup releases of 2020, and it's the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop Palette. Specifically in this video, I'm gonna be trying this one, which is the Orange Sorbet Palette. I'm also gonna be using some cheap products in this video from Odin's Eye and the Kaleidos Makeup Charisma Contour. The Charisma Contour is one of my favourites, but I've not really ventured into the Odin's Eye products too much, so I thought it'd be fun to do that on camera as well. So we've got a lot to get through in this video, so why don't we just get started? Hey okay, guys, before we get started on the actual tutorial for the look and the demo of the products, just want to give you a little bit of info about these BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop palettes particularly if you're in the UK, because they weren't available on Beauty Bay, although BH Cosmetics is available there. Very strange, because they get most of their releases. I was kind of waiting for them to come, and then I missed out altogether, because they never came. They were released, I think, June time, June, July of 2020. Weren't we stopped for a long time, and then they came back November, December of last year. And um, that's when I realised if I wanted them, I was going to have to get them from one of the places they're available, and it's either the BH Cosmetics site in the US or Germany. Now the German site is in German, I don't speak German, and I couldn't see an option to ship to the UK, so I decided it might be just easier to buy from the US site, which is what I did. If you're in the UK, don't worry about buying from the US site, they came super quickly, I think five, six days and they were here, which it was at a time when US shipping was really slow as well, so I was super impressed how quickly they arrived and they're really well packaged, and as I say, they're inexpensive anyway, so although you're gonna be paying customs, it still doesn't make them a, a hugely expensive purchase. They're $18 each. So I managed to pick up four of them. There's six in the range. I wasn't interested in the sugar cone, really, because that's neutral, and I've got those shades already, and I would have picked up the cotton candy, but it sold out so fast, I just wasn't quick enough to get that. But I've got four of them, so I'm going to show you what I have. So as I say, we're going to be using this one in this video. This is the orange sorbet. And all of them have the same format. So you've got a row of mattes and a row of complementary shimmers in various different tones, but following the theme. So obviously these are all orange and quite big pans in there. I think for this one in particular would make really nice orange blush. Might pluck up the courage to do that at some point with a light hand, but very impressed with the amount of product that you're getting in these. They're, they're as I say, nice big pans. Next up, I've got the Bubblegum palette. Might surprise you guys I wanted this one because I've spoken many times about the fact that blue eyeshadow isn't really for me, but I want to get out of my comfort zone in 2021 and I want to start creating more blue looks. Everyone says they look nice on me, I just need to, to find my love for, for blue and it does scare me a little bit. So, so yeah, this is why I bought this one, to venture more into blue eyeshadow really. And I thought this one was good because I love a navy shadow, that's kind of more in my comfort zone. And the tones aren't too scary, that one's probably my least favourite kind of blue because it's one of those more powder blues, but I love the deep navy the pale kind of icy shimmers look gorgeous. That one's got a bit more of a green tone to it. So there were blues I thought I could get down with and I'm really excited now I've seen it. When you see them close up, they're a lot more beautiful than you actually would even imagine. So yeah, I'm excited for that one. Next up, we've got probably the most hyped of the release and that's the pistachio. If I could only pick one, this was the one I knew I had to have because I love green eyeshadow, don't have any problems with that. And these are just gorgeous, gorgeous tones inside. Again, you've got the, the row of mattes and the row of shimmers in complementary colours going from a light apple green to a deep forest green and some varying shades in between. This one's quite minty. Yeah, super, super pretty and a lot you could do with that. And last but not least, I got the Cherry on Top palette. I love red eyeshadow, so the chance to get more red in my collection is always a bonus. So again, I knew I was gonna pick this one up. Of, of the four, I think the Pistachio and the Cherry on Top were the ones that were calling my name the most. And this is the colors in the Cherry on Top. Again, you've got some deep reds right down to some lighter ones. You've got the shimmers on top and the mattes 
underneath so exactly the same format I think you've got quite a lot of depth here that you can create with this shade they're not what I would call red red though they're more kind of pinky red or orangey red I'm very fussy with red red is one of my my passions for shadows so to me they're not super red but they are cherry tones because if you think of what a cherry looks like it's kind of got that burgundy-ish tone and pinkiness to it it's not a true pillar box is it so I think they've, they've done a really good job for the theme that the palette is I'm super excited to try that one so yeah they're the four I picked up if I ever get the chance to pick up the cotton candy you can bet I will those pinks and purples look gorgeous but yeah that's what I've got and then also in this video as I say I'm going to be trying out one of the flower blushes from Odin's Eye this one's in the shade Water Lily which looks like that it's quite deep but I think I can make it work and I've got the Songmon highlighter palette as well I'm going to try out one of the shades from that I think we should just jump straight into the tutorial I'll zoom you in and I'll show you how I created this look okay guys super excited for this I'm going to be trying out some things that are new to me I know they're not new to to the market but new to me and use some old favorites as well in this one so it should be a lot of fun I've already done my base makeup so foundation concealer powder and my brows and we're just pretty much going to concentrate on cheap products and the eye look in this video but I'm going to go in with a favourite first for contour I'm going to be using this which is the Charisma Contour from Kaleidos Makeup mine's in the shade Cool and Light and I always just use the, the bigger pan in there pretty much and normally I use a bit smaller brush than this one this is the Kaleidos brush for this purpose the angled contour c1 and it's great but it's quite a big brush so you get quite a lot of product but then it does blend it out so sometimes if I want a bit more structured contour I'm going with a smaller brush for this but I've been doing a bit of brush washing this morning so I haven't got all of my favorites available and this one is a good brush don't get me wrong it's just it does distribute quite a bit of product but then I'm not going to be going in with bronzer today so I'm always sort of doing a bronzer contour at the same time so I think it will be fine it's a great product really enjoy this product it's the perfect color if you're as cool and light as me it's the perfect name for the product and as you can see I've really not had to do much to to blend that out and it looks really really pretty on my cheeks for blush today I'm going in with an Elva blush from Odin's Eye this one is the shade Water Lily so it's one of their flower blushes the flower ones have a bit more shimmer and shine in them than the fruit blushes so that's that so it's quite a deep colour for me so I'm going to focus it quite high and that makes it a bit more wearable I think I'm going to sort of take it more towards my temples rather than bringing it down here but I always am attracted to the deeper colours in blush I like my blush to, to show this brush I'm using you've probably seen me use before if you've been here before it was a gift with purchase from Certify which is a UK indie brand and of course Odin's Eye is a Swedish indie brand I'm trying to use a lot more indie makeup on my channel this year not that I didn't last year but really going to focus on that as much as I can this year now that's down I'm just gonna just use the brush just to blend that out a little bit but these blend really super easy and we're just gonna go for a little blush on the nose moment because I've been loving that just lately and then for highlight we're going in with this which is the Solman highlight palette and I think I'm going to use this shade I'm using the H2 precision highlight brush from Kaleidos and this isn't a super blinding highlight well it's not a glittery highlight should I say but it is quite quite impactful as you can see just like a champagne kind of colored highlight but I didn't want anything too crazy because I'm going in with an orange palette and could have done orange blush but orange blush is slightly out of my comfort zone 
So we're going in now with the Orange Sorbet palette by BH. Super excited to try it. There's been so much hype on these palettes, so let's see what I think. So I'm gonna go in with extra toppings, this one, and Citron, I think. They're kind of the, the ones I wanna focus on. Could have used that as blush, couldn't I, if I'd have been a bit more daring, but I didn't. Prime in with the MAC Painsley Paint Pot, as I normally do. Not quite sure what look I want to do yet. I think it's more for this time out, just trying out the formula and seeing what I think of these palettes because I love BH, as you guys might know. I've got the Halloween palettes, both of those, the Full On Crazy palette and a little bit Psycho palette. I love those. I've got the Summer in Saint Tropez and I've got the Blueberry Muffin and I've tried all of those and I like those a lot. So got high hopes and as I say the hype has been real for, for these palettes so I'm expecting them to be amazing. So I'm going to start with the shade Extra Toppings, this one here. I'm just going to start focusing that pretty much in my outer corner and outer part of my crease. I think I might do a bit of a two-toned kind of crease look today. I've not done that in a long long time so I thought that might be a bit fun to do. Although this is an orange palette, this is very a coral shade and I'm living for it, it's beautiful. I'm using quite a fluffy brush to lay this down, this is the Sigma E45. Because I can get quite precise with it. And normally it doesn't distribute product as pigmented as this, like it will shear it out quite a bit, but wow that's just like bam. don't know how BH are doing it for the price, I mean these palettes are $18, they've got a high-end formula for a drugstore price, it's incredible. Can't wait to see what they do in 2021. I'm going to try and take that a little bit higher. I'm trying to keep my eye open but make sure that we've got as much as possible above the crease so that it shows without going all the way up to my brows which I sometimes get a little carried away with that. I think for the more inner part of my crease I'm going to go in with the shade Tangerine and this is another Sigma E45, just a white handled one. I'm just going to use that just to pack the shadow down. I can get right into my crease with that because it's tapered and pointed. This is the sort of colour that normally you've got to pack a white base down to get it to show and this is pretty impressive it's showing up over the paint pot which has kind of got a pinky kind of hue to it anyway and so it doesn't always make shadows pop so I normally would use pastel shades or neon shades with a, a white base as I say but I haven't needed to here just where they meet in the middle and to help the blend I'm going to go in with the shade Azess this one here so we've basically gone across to do the gradient using the same brush because there wasn't much product left on that. I'm just going to drag those across so that they create a bit of a blend there in the centre. And I am really not very good at blending but these are pretty much blending themselves which is great to see. We don't have a lighter shade in the palette as a blending shade, so I'm just going to blend with no additional product. But they are blending super easily. I really hope they bring these back. There's a couple that are out of stock at the moment. I say I can't get hold of the cotton candy I really wanted that one the pinks and purples look beautiful in that that sold out super quickly this time and weirdly to me the sugar cone has sold out which is a neutral one I wasn't going to buy that anyway because I think I've got enough neutral tones but I was surprised how quickly that one sold out just going to pretty much replicate what I've done on the upper lid on the lower lid so I'm going to take a pencil brush and just bring the extra topping shade down and connect it with the outer corner. I've got no primer there on my lower lash line and these are adhering really well and popping really well even with no primer. 
which you don't always find. Just taking the tangerine shade around my inner corner. I will pop a shimmer over that, but I just want a bit of flow and continuity from the upper lash line to the lower lash line. And then just taking the zest shade and connecting the two. This is the easiest sunset vibe look you're ever going to come across, I think, using these. Just using that blending brush again, I'm just going to blend underneath. Just want to blow those out just a bit, but not, not crazy. Going in with NYX Glitter Primer, and I'm going to pretty much cover my entire lid space with glitter primer and then just one shimmer shadow on the lid. I think I'm going to keep it super simple. This brush I'm using here is the SK05 from Suzanne Jackson. So I'm going to go with Citra now and pack that all over the lid. Oh, that's so pretty and reflective. That's gorgeous. Got a lot of dimension in that, which I really appreciate in a shimmer. Look how glitzy that is, it's gorgeous. I'm not going to worry too much about what's happening out here because I'm going to cover that with a wing. I wanted to make sure I've got the shimmer all over the entirety of my lid. Sometimes I feel like I overcomplicate it by taking three or four shimmers and blending them all into one another and that sometimes just making one shimmer shade the star of the show can really be effective. I'm going with this shade Yum just as an inner corner highlight and I always like to bring my inner corner highlight down just a little bit onto my lower lash line as well so I'm going to do that. That's just giving us a little bit of an extra pop, but it's very similar in tone to the Citron shade. So that's the look to this point. Looking slightly crazy until I've grounded it with a bit of eyeliner, I think. But just going to hop off camera for a wing, mascara and a lip. And I'll be back with you with the finished look and to wrap up the video. Okay, guys, so here's the finished look. Made a few additions off camera. I was always intending to do a wing liner, but once I'd done the wing liner, it's a pretty big wing and I needed to kind of balance the lower lash line. So I'll tell you what I did, but this is the NYX Epic Ink liner. That's what I've created the, the wing with there. It's my holy grail for wing liner. Inexpensive and really, really good. And then to balance things, I've used Black Core from Linda Halberg, one of the core crayons. And why I like these so much is once they're set, they won't go anywhere. They're great in the waterline, particularly if you've got quite sensitive, watery eyes like I do. They won't budge, but you've got probably about a 30 seconds to a minute kind of smudge time where you can blend them out. So if you work quickly, you can achieve a bit of a smudged out look like I've done here. So I put this in the waterline, just smudged it out just with a pencil brush and smudged it into the shadows that are on my lower lash that you saw me create in the tutorial. And I think that's given us some balance to the look. And yeah, I think it worked really well. Mascara today, I've run out of Bad Gal Bang by Benefit, one of my, well, my favourite mascara. And I'm on a low buy, so I'm trying to use up everything I've got before I buy some more. But honestly, I think I'm going to have to invest in one of those. I tried this, which is the Climax Mascara from NARS. It's okay. It's just not as good as the Bad Girl Bang, in all honesty. It's got a big brush head to it. It's not got the uh, plastic kind of brush tip. So it's difficult to get precise without getting the brush sort of onto your eyeshadow. And I don't think it's really pumped up my lashes too much. And as someone that doesn't wear false lashes, I really need a mascara that, that's quite impactful. I don't think this is it, or not for me anyway. For lips today, I've gone with a bit of a combo. I've got an Urban Decay 24-7 lip liner. This is in the shade Crawl. It's kind of like a metallic lip liner. So I use it all over my lips and fill it in. And then I wanted a bit of gloss to the proceedings. So I've gone in with a Kaleidos Makeup Lucid Lip and this is in the shade Dramatize. And I really like the, the combination of those two together. If I'm wearing a gloss, I like to put a lip liner underneath so that I can still create some structure to my lips and overline them a little bit because I have got quite 
quite small and not very plump lips if I don't do that. So that's how I created the look. Let's move on to my thoughts on the palette in particular. So I used the orange sorbet and had a really, really good time with it. I can see why people are so impressed with these palettes. I've tried the, the travel series, you know, like the Summer in Saint-Tropez palettes. I've tried the brunch ones, so the blueberry muffin palette and a couple of the palettes that they brought out for Halloween, the Little Bit Psycho and the Full On Crazy. Love all of those, but I think these are on another level and definitely from what I've tried here, they are. They're an interesting formula really because they're so pigmented, but you haven't got lots of kick up at all, which I was really surprised with because a lot of the time when you've got a super pigmented matte, it's pigmented because it's powdery. But these had very minimal kick up, so I'm not quite sure how they're so pigmented without that, but they really are an interesting uh, and creamy kind of, but blendable formula in the mattes. The shimmers, ultra reflective. I mean, that, that shade, what's it called, Citron, that I've used all over my lid, it's just absolutely stunning. It's a gorgeous, glitzy, impactful formula, but it's not showing a bunch of texture on my eyelids. Yeah, it's just super, super beautiful. So again, as I said in the intro, I think you could probably get away with using some of these with a light hand as blush as well. So if you go for this one, I think you've probably got a two for one in there. And this is the only one that's got a bit more neutral tone as well. So if you're trying to dip into colour, but you want some sort of a bit more neutral colours that aren't going to be quite so scary, maybe for daytime or whatever, then this one's quite versatile I would say of the ones that I've bought. Now I don't necessarily like to buy monochromatic palettes because I sometimes think that they're a one trick pony but because you've got a range of shades from light to dark and you've got shimmers and you've got mattes to complement each other I think there's a lot you can do with these and obviously with them only being $18 if you buy more than one you can then start mixing and matching which is what I intend to do with mine so I'm really happy I bought them. I don't know why I took so long. And yeah, just hope I can get hold of the cotton candy to complete my collection of the ones that I would like to own. On to the Odin's Eye products that I tried out today then. So the Flower Blusher, the Alpha Flower Blusher in the shade Water Lily, this one here. It's really, really pretty. I mean, I'm very pale of a skin tone. You can make it work. It blends out super easily. I just always go a bit higher with my product placement if I'm using a deeper colour, makes it a lot easier. It almost acts as contour blush in that way then. I think I like the fruit blushes just a tad more, which surprises me because they're matte. These have got a bit of shimmer in them. And I think it's more so because I chose colours that are a bit more flattering for me in the fruit ones than I did in the flower blushes, but they're they're a nice formula for either of them. And then the Solman Highlighter Palette, I've used it once before on camera, I think, but I didn't use this shade that I used in the, the video today before. So this is what I've used. It's a basic champagne colored highlighter, really. Nothing too amazing about it. If I'm quite honest, I think I prefer the Elva Highlight Palette more because you've got that glitzy shade called Salamander in there, which is worth the, the price alone. But then I love a glittery highlight. This one's still pretty uh, intense. You know, you can see the glow. It's just not got that glitteriness that I prefer. So it's just personal preference, I think, with highlights, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the formula. It goes on super smooth. And as I say, it's pretty reflective on the cheeks. The Charisma Contour from Kaleidos Makeup, you've seen me use a number of times. It's becoming my holy grail for contour. Love the packaging of it, how small and kind of compact it is. There's a lot of product in there though, and it doesn't seem to be disappearing anytime soon. I mean, I've had this for a few months now. I've been using it every day, got no dip in it whatsoever. And I like having particularly this shade for nose contour and this shade more for, for contour. Don't really use that powder because it's not quite light enough as a highlight powder for me. But I've used it a number of times, but I haven't really talked about it too much when I've been using it, so I thought you might appreciate my thoughts on it. 
so that's it that wraps up everything for this video guys thank you so so much for watching and if you're new to my channel i'd love it if you consider subscribing before you go and also hit that notification bell so that you're informed of my future uploads and if you've not been here before perhaps you don't know what i do i focus mostly on indie makeup and on colorful makeup this year i'm on pretty much of a no buy so i'm going to be using lots of things from my collection that i already own and i've been a massive makeup collector for a number of years so i've got some very interesting products in my collection so if you want to see all of that and see me applying it in creative ways maybe you're a bit older i'm 52 so you know perhaps you want someone that's your age to follow that's doing makeup that not many people our age do on camera then I'd love to have you along and if you are new please drop a comment down below I really want to get to know my subscribers and I promise to answer all my comments it takes me a while sometimes because I like to leave a personal reply to every comment that I get but trust me I will read them all and it normally takes me two or three days to then catch up and to answer them all I tend to do it all in one big session at the end as I say it's lovely to have you here and i hope you're going to join me for more videos in the future but i hope you've enjoyed this video guys I hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are and catch you in the next one bye guys mm -hmm.